Hello all, today we're going to continue the numerical methods and we will extend the application of newton raphson method from a single nonlinear algebraic equation to a system of nonlinear algebraic equations. Okay, let's start with a single nonlinear algebraic equation. So it normally takes the form of fx is equal to 0. And if you refer to the previous lecture, the iterative newton raphson formula was where i denotes the iteration number. Now if you want to move on to a system of nonlinear algebraic equation, it will take the following form. So this is the most general form of a system of nonlinear algebraic equations with n equations and n variables. But to give you a better uh, understanding of a system of nonlinear equations, let's solve an example from your textbook. The example asks you to solve a system of two nonlinear algebraic equations, which are So if we convert them to the standard form, as I showed just above, but instead of calling them f1 and f2, for simplicity, I will just call these two functions f and y. But you have to consider that f, for example, is now a function of x and y, which is x squared plus x times y minus 10, and our equation is f of x and y is equal to 0. And the same thing for g of x and y, which is y plus 3 times x times y squared minus 57 is equal to 0. Okay, let me now change the color because I have to go slightly off the topic. And before introducing the steps that are involved in the newton raphson method for a system of equations, I have to drive its formula. And if you remember, everything starts with the Taylor series expansion. In the previous session, we wrote the Taylor series for a single variable function, which is And we truncated the series after two terms and basically we added the truncation error in here. Now we can expand the concept of Taylor series expansion for a system of multiple equations. For example, for our case, we can write, so we start with writing the Taylor series expansion for function f and we realize that this time f is a function of two variables x and y so f at x i plus one and y i plus one is equal to f at x i and y i plus the derivative of f with respect to x and this is also at x i and y i so for simplicity, instead of writing x i and y i, I will just say derivative of f with respect to x at i multiplied by x i plus 1 minus x i plus the derivative of f with respect to y again at i multiplied by y i plus 1 minus y i. And then there is a truncation error. I can do the same thing for function g. Now I just rewrite the system of equation, but this time using the matrix notation. So I'll start with a 2 by 1 matrix for the left hand side of the equations and then the first element will be f 
add x i plus 1 and y i plus 1 and the second element will be g at i plus 1 on the right hand side we have another matrix which is f at i and g at i plus and here i'll just combine the next two terms together and write it in the form of a two by two matrix so this is two by one two by one two by two matrix multiplied by a two by one matrix and the elements of this two by two matrix are del f del x at i del f del y at i del g del x at i and del g del y at i okay and the second matrix will be x i plus 1 minus x i and y i plus 1 minus y i finally plus a matrix for the truncation error which includes two elements e t1 and e t2 now at this point i'll have to introduce a few more notations so firstly i introduce capital x which is a matrix of my variables x and y i also introduce capital f which is a matrix of my functions which are f and g and finally capital j which is a two by two matrix with these elements del f del x del f del y del g del x and del g del y and by the way this is a very famous matrix which is called the jacobian matrix and i also introduce a matrix let's call it capital e which includes the truncation errors et1 and et2 so now if we consider all of these notations we can rewrite the above matrix expression or matrix equation in the following form capital f at i plus one is equal to capital f at i plus the jacobian matrix at i multiplied by capital x at i plus one minus the jacobian matrix at i multiplied by capital x at i plus the error matrix and if you notice these two terms they correspond to this multiplication somehow i just expanded the multiplication into two terms and now i just rewrite the equation but this time i don't want to include the errors so instead of the equation sign i use the approximation sign and i just remind you that we want to use this formula in the newton raphson method so we can estimate the roots for the function capital f so ideally at x i plus one and y i plus one the value of the function will be zero so the left hand side of the equation is zero and the reason is x i plus one and y i plus one are the roots so if i rearrange this i can write j at i times x i plus one is approximately equal to j at i times x at i minus capital f at i and in the next step i multiply the two sides of the approximation by the inverse of j i so i get j i inverse multiplied by j i multiplied by x i plus one 
is approximately equal to j i inverse times j i times x i minus j i inverse times f i and we know that when we multiply a matrix by its inverse it results in the identity matrix or the unit matrix so basically i can simplify this expression to x i plus 1 is approximately equal to x i minus j i inverse times f i and this is the formula that we use in newton raphson method for a system of nonlinear equation and now let me change the color again and start writing the steps of newton raphson method for a system of equation Again, on the left hand side, I write the steps and on the right hand side, I'll implement those steps to the example 6, 12. So the problem description is solve f of x and y equal to 0 and g of x and y equal to 0. In the example, we have f of x and y is equal to x2 plus x times y minus 10 is equal to 0 and g of x and y is equal to y plus 3x times y squared minus 57 is equal to 0 and then the first step is to assume an initial guess which we call it capital xi which is x i and y i and at the beginning this will be capital x zero and in this case it will be 1.5 and 3.5 for x and y respectively and by the way we know the answer for this system of equation which is x is 2 and y is 3 or in the matrix form is a matrix of 2 and 3. Step 2 is to calculate fi and the inverse of Jacobian at i. So in our example, f0 will be x2 plus xy minus 10 and y plus 3x y squared minus 57 at x equal to 1.5 and y equal to 3.5 which are our initial guesses for x and y so f0 will be minus 2.5 and 1.625 then we have to first calculate the jacobian for our initial guesses which is so the first element is the derivative of function f with respect to x which will be 2x plus y remember when you are filling the elements of jacobian if you are taking the derivative with respect to one variable the other variable will be treated as constant so if we are taking the derivative with respect to x, we treat y as constant. And then the same thing for del f del y. So when we take the derivative of f with respect to y, we assume that x is constant. So del f del y will be x and del g del x will be 3y squared and del g del y will be 1 plus 6 times x times y and if i evaluate this matrix at x equal to 1.5 and y equal to 3.5 the answer will be but remember we need to calculate the inverse of jacobian so for that let me just in a different color 
if you refresh it about how to find the inverse of a 2 by 2 matrix. If matrix A consists of elements A, B, C, and D, then A inverse is 1 over A times D minus B times C multiplied by a new matrix and I just remind you that the denominator is the determinant of matrix A and this matrix is called the adjugate of matrix A so the determinant of a 2 by 2 matrix is the multiplication of the elements on the main diagonal which is A times D minus the multiplication of the elements on the other diagonal which is b times c and to make the adjugate of matrix a all we do is on the main diagonal we just swap the elements and on the other diagonal we just take the negative of the elements so if i do the same thing for our matrix j0 the inverse of j0 will be 1 over the determinant of j0 which is in this case 9.875 times the adjugate of j0 which is 10 6.5 minus 1.5 and minus 36.75 so this is a step two. In a step three, we have to estimate a new solution for the system of equations using the newton raphson formula, which is x i plus one is equal to x i minus the inverse of Jacobian matrix at i times f at i. So for our example, x1 will be x0, which is this matrix here, 1.5 and 3.5, minus the inverse of Jacobian at 0, which is multiplied by f at 0 which is minus 2.5 and 1.625 so if you do these matrix operations you'll get x1 is equal to 2.03 and 2.84 so x1 is our next estimation of the roots of the system of equation and if we look at the answer, which is 2 and 3, we are actually closer to the answer now compared to our original estimate, which was 1.5 and 3.5. And step 4 is to calculate the error, which is the approximate relative error. And again, in here, the error also takes a matrix form so we can introduce the error matrix which is absolute of xi plus 1 minus xi over xi plus 1 and absolute of yi plus 1 minus yi over yi plus 1 and we can represent it in terms of percentage so if i do so for our example the matrix of error will be and we can present it in percentage which is 26% and 23% finally step 5 is to check whether our error is smaller than our pre-specified tolerance if the answer is yes we will stop the iteration if the answer is no we will continue the iteration by going back to step one 
and using x i plus 1 as our initial guess so in case of our example we can have multiple pre-specified tolerances one for x and one for y but for simplicity let's assume that we have only one pre-specified tolerance one percent and clearly our errors are larger than our pre-specified tolerance so we have to continue the iteration well let's stop in here i'll make a excel sheet to continue the iteration until convergence okay i created this excel sheet just to continue the iterations in here the system of equation and the answer are given technically we don't know the answer but this is just for the sake of comparison and uh, our initial guess is x equal to 1.5 and y equal to 3.5 and we already explained the definition of matrix f and the jacobian matrix and our pre-specified tolerance is one percent for both x and y this is a newton raphson formula that we use to solve this system of nonlinear equation so in iteration one my counter is zero because i want to start with the initial guess of x zero which is 1.5 and 3.5 if i evaluate f and j at x zero i'll get these two matrices and i can calculate the inverse of the jacobian matrix which is this matrix in here one thing i have to uh, mention in here is that in excel we can do limited number of matrix operation including the calculation of the inverse of a matrix and that's what i've done in here to obtain the inverse of ji i just repeat the same thing down below just to show you how this has been done so the first thing is you have to choose the cells that you want the answer to be assigned to in here we need four cells so i've chosen these four cells then i press equal sign and then for inverse of a matrix we have the function matrix inverse and we have to open the parentheses and then we choose the elements of our matrix which are these four cells we close the parentheses and then we have to go control shift and then hit end as you can see this is the inverse of matrix ji and same thing i've done on top next we have to calculate the xi plus one which is our next estimate of the solution and for that we are using the newton raphson formula that we derived uh, again for calculating this matrix you can use matrix operation or you can do it manually i've done manually but either way it works and these are the errors for x and y and you see that both of them are larger than our pre-specified tolerance so we have to continue the iteration so i just copy these rows and paste them down below then uh, this is iteration number two and the counter is at one we also know that the initial guess for this iteration is the solution of the previous iteration so i have to change the initial guess to these values and as you can see after the second iteration our estimates of the solution are much closer to our real answers but the errors are still larger than one percent so i'll continue with one more iteration in here so this is iteration number three and the counter is at two and our initial guess is equal to the solution of the previous iteration and as you can see after the third iteration we are right at the answers and the errors are both zero percent i think with that i can conclude the session thank you for your time and i'll see you in the next lecture